What can averages, medians, and ranges reveal about a contest? Who will be the lucky winner of Mr. Mark's Math Adventures Giveaway number one? Join me as we explore these questions in today's episode of Mr. Mark's Math Adventures. Hey math learners, it's Mr. Marks here, your friendly neighborhood math teacher. Remember, it's not just about getting the right answers. It's about learning and growing along the way. Before we dive into today's adventure, remember to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to stay tuned for future episodes. Today's episode's super special because today we're going to use statistics to reveal the winner of Mr. Mark's Math Adventures giveaway number one. Now, first things first, I'd like to invite you to join me in congratulating the winner of our contest, Melanie from California. Congratulations, Melanie. You're the winner of a brand new Mr. Mark's Math Mode. Let's see some celebratory remarks in the comments for Melanie. All right, now in today's adventure, we're going to use our giveaways participant entry data set as a vessel to dive into the world of mean, range, and mode. And as we begin, remember that Mr. Mark's AI is always just one click away, offering instant, personalized help in exploring the mathematical world of Mr. Mark's math adventures. It's perfect for learners of all ages and makes math fun and interactive. And do consider using the companion worksheet. It's a great free tool that you can use to follow along with each episode. Links to both are down in the description. Let's start by setting up our data. We've got a spreadsheet here with two columns, name placeholder and number of entries. Taking the time to initially organize our data like this is key to any statistical exploration. For our first quest, we'll find the average, or as mathematicians like to call it, the mean number of entries per person. Remember, the average, or mean, is calculated by dividing the sum of all entries by the total count of participants. Let me show you how it's done step by step. First, we need the sum of all entries, or the total of all entries when we add them all together. We'll highlight every single entry in the number of entries column to see the sum. With our data highlighted, take a glance down in that Excel status bar at the bottom. You see those numbers? Excel's already calculating the sum value for us. 1,428 entries. It's like having a mathematical assistant. Make sure you note down that sum of 1,428 entries in an empty cell. And now, let's count how many participants we have. We'll highlight every single entry in the name placeholder column, and we'll get to see the count. With our data highlighted like this, take a glance at that Excel status bar one more time. Excel again is already calculating the count for us. A count of 136 math learning entrants. Let's make note of that as well in any empty cell. Now to find the average, type the equal key, and click the cell with our sum of 1,428. Type the divide key, then click the cell with our count of 136. This division will reveal the average number of entries per person by dividing our sum by our count. Hit enter, and there it is, the mean. The mean number of entries is 10.5, or 10 and a half entries. All right, now it's time to uncover our mode in our data. The mode is just the number that appears the most in our data. Let's find which participant, or participants, obtain the most entries. First, type in equals mode, M-O-D-E, and then click and drag to select the whole range of cells in the number of entries column. This tells the spreadsheet, hey! Find me the most common number in this selection of cells. After selecting the cells, close those parentheses and hit enter. And just like that, the spreadsheet does the heavy lifting and reveals the mode to be six. The mode, or the individual number of entries that occurred the most, was six entries. What do you think? Are there other easier ways to find the mode than this? And next up on our math adventure, we're gonna discover the range of our data. Think of the range as describing the distance from the smallest to the largest number of entries in our collection of entry data. What do you say we keep using our Excel skills to light the way? First, let's click and drag again to highlight every number in our number of entries column. And with our data highlighted, take a glance once more at that Excel status bar down at the bottom. You see those numbers again? Excel's already calculating the minimum and maximum values for us. Note down the minimum, the smallest value, in this case, one entry. Note down the maximum value, in this case, 28 entries in two empty cells. These are our data's boundaries. We're gonna need them for our next step. And in another empty cell, what do you say we now calculate the range? First type in equals and click that cell with our maximum number of 28. Type subtract and then click that cell with the minimum number of one. This subtraction is going to reveal the full stretch of our collection of data. Now hit enter, there it is. The range turns out to be 27. It shows us how wide our data stretches. Each of these numbers and calculations tells us a part of the story of our data. And it's up to us, the math explorers, 
to intentionally piece it all together. Hey, could one of you have the top number of entries next time? And maybe even win your very own Mr. Mark's math mug? What other statistics can we find under the hood? Comment your thoughts and stay tuned. With your feedback, we may just dive deeper into this data in a future episode. Hey, props to you for taking some time out of your day to do some math with me. I hope you followed along and if you made mistakes, that's all good. Remember that every mistake is a step towards learning something new. And hey, Mr. Mark's Math Adventures is holding a giveaway. Click the link down in the description below to see all the giveaway details and for your chance to win. This is Mr. Mark signing off. I'll catch you next time with another math problem. What did you think? Did you approach this problem differently? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this problem, show your support by liking and sharing this video. And don't forget to follow my page to stay up to date on more math related content. Until next time, 